Hey, can you hear me? Can you hear me? How about how about now? Can you hear me now? Hello. Hi. Hey, can you hear us? Can you hear us? Yeah. Okay. All right. So I brought Jen in here, and you're actually uh, we have two cameras on us, one on us and one on you. And so, um, just real briefly, I want. Uh, I know you don't know that you, you didn't know all this was happening, so that's kind of why we were doing this. Um, you know, kind of like surprises. I do. I love surprises. <laughs> Um, can, yeah. um, would you mind, um, telling just very briefly, like in, in five minutes or less, your, uh, 12 plus year struggle with drugs and what your life was like before you came here? Yeah. So, um, I got into, I got into drugs, I hung out with the very wrong people I shouldn't have ever been hanging out with. Um, I had a very tragic loss happen to me and my daughter, and um, it kind of made me spiral out of control. Um, and I didn't know how to deal with those feelings, so I wanted to numb it the best way I knew how, and that was with drugs and alcohol and anything I get my hands on. And um, so I started doing started with pain pills um then i started drinking every night started drinking every morning started from like 7 a.m until whenever i passed out from it um how old were you and how, then the strategy, how old were you when you when you started using regularly um probably 12 or 13 i would say okay um that's when i started with the alcohol and the the weed and the pain pills and and all of that. Um, so we had a tragic loss and he overdosed from heroin. Um, and you would think that would make me like draw away from it, like not want to do that, but it actually made me want to do it even more, I guess, in a sense to feel what he was feeling and all the pain and suffering. And, you know, I don't, I don't know how to explain that, but um, I turned to it instead of away from it, and um, it was just an awful down spiral. Um, how many times did you? you know, how many times did you try recovery? Um, a few times. I think it was at least three or four times. Um, I went to short term retreat short-term treatment centers like 30 days and tried detox and you know i tried to send myself to detox all i did was detox and got out and started using again um and then it didn't really hit me that i needed full recovery until i was sitting in the detox cell once again and just got really sick of it and just the pain and suffering and having my mamma hang up on me and tell me she's done. She's, she didn't want to hear my jail phone calls anymore. And, um, how old, and how old were you? When I, when you decided to finally get clean, um, I think I was, let's see, 27. <laughs> Seven. I believe. Okay. And um, we knew each other because I, I knew your aunts. I'd gone to school with your aunts. And um, I had known you since you were probably that 12 or 13 year old kid. Um, but they contacted me um, a, a little while ago, a few years ago, a couple years ago, a couple years ago, I guess, and said, hey, Allie's doing really great. And Allie's, you know, really doing a fantastic job. And I know that you're all about giving people second chances. And I, dead in their eyes, said, I would give anybody a chance, but Allie's not going to make it. I'm, I'm not going to hire Allie cause I, because Allie is not, is, is not proven to me that Allie is truly a different person than I knew, you know, the first time I represented you in court at 17 years old. And so, 
Um, but I said, I'll tell you what, I will interview Allie. What did I say at the end of that interview? Do you remember? Well, I remember, I remember you told me that I had one chance and if I messed that up, I was gone. Um, that I had one chance to prove to you that I was actually going to do this and actually going to, you know, put an effort to show that I actually wanted this job and that I actually wanted to help people and that I wasn't just here for a paycheck or, or whatever. And you said if it got too much for me in my sobriety, that I'd be gone as well. And do you so remember, far, I think it's done nothing but help my sobriety. Do you remember me saying that um, it's going against my better judgment, but I'm going to give you a chance and I'm going to yeah. hire you? And um, uh, you you mentioned a couple things to me that day. You said, you know, I have a, I have a record um, that I'm, you know, I'm coming off probation and... Uh, you also said, I have an appearance issue um, that uh, that I want to make sure you're okay with. And when you walked in, you actually had, you were wearing long sleeves and you had, you had your sleeves pulled down. You're getting ready to go to court that afternoon. And then you showed me um, your hands, right? You remember that? So show, yeah. me, show me your hands. Okay. It's all terrible. And when did, when did you... When did you get the tattoos on your hands and and your knuckles and things? While you were in the throes um, of your addiction? Yes, and I was in complete madness. Um, I don't even remember getting the one on my hand. I just know that I was completely out of my mind and he had a tattoo gun, some random guy. So I said, here you go, you know, practice. <laughs> and didn't think about the consequences of it being on my hands for the rest of my life, but I didn't see myself being in sobriety at that time either. In fact, you told me one time you didn't think you'd see yourself alive but very much longer either, right? Yeah. So, um, first things first, um, uh, we have gotten an insurance company to actually provide a bond for you to actually become a notary public. Now, that, oh. me that means that we still have to pull your file and we have to get approval from the judges and things and I'll work on that. All right. But I wanted you to see that we actually have a notary bond for you that we, we went out of our way to make sure that, um, you could get, because I know how important it is for you to be able to live a normal life now. And you, you are haunted by your past which is also the one thing that makes you one of my best workers, one of my best employees. And um, you give me faith every day that there is hope for all the people that we help. Because at 17, you had dead eyes, girl. And I told your yeah. family you, were, um, you wouldn't make it to 21. I told them right then. How you did, I don't know. I mean, you must have the constitution of just an unbelievable person. You've got like iron in you or something, but you did it. And I'm very, very proud of you. And that's why, that's the first thing we did. The second thing I wanted to tell you and, and uh, kind of surprise you with is that um, y you are, you are beautiful the way that you are. You can, you can have tattoos all over you. Face would be weird, but, but you could have tattoos all over you. And it's a, it's a, an avenue for you to um, open up to others and talk to them. And I know you've done that because I've, I know people have asked you about, you know, did you get, were you in jail? Were you, you know, were you in recovery? But I know it bothers you because you're, you're raising a 15 year old young lady and you've uh, got another daughter. Um, and it, it makes a big deal to you because you want to be um, the quintessential normal person and mom these days too, not just a, probation worker, right? So, uh, show me those hands again. All right. So Jen and I have worked out with a friend of mine, um, that we are going to pay for the removal of the tattoos off your hand, a hand, no both of them. Yeah. Yeah. And that this is our thanks to you for being such a hard worker 
And I, you know, usually when I say to Jen, like, hey, I've got an idea, just hear me out. Usually I have to explain everything, but like, she was just like, yeah, do it. When are we telling her? And so that's why we wanted to have this meeting today because I, that's why I was asking all the questions last night and I was working it out with a friend of mine. It's a, it's a unique procedure. It's not laser. Um, it's, it's done in a very similar format that actually receiving a tattoo does, but it actually, uh, takes the ink out, even prison tattoo ink, it'll remove it. it it's gonna take, uh, it may take up to 40 weeks, which would mean like uh, four or five treatments. Uh, it would take about eight weeks in between each time. It's not gonna be the most pleasant thing. You're probably gonna have to have gauze on your hands for a little bit and we'll all make fun of you a little bit because you're typing weird and you, can, and you can't text us. But well, she has an Android, so she has an Android, so they don't text us <laughs> so anyway. So it doesn't work either way. <laughs> yeah, but um, we are when when uh, when Jen and I told you all uh, when you came on board that uh, all of our employees are family. That especially goes for you. I've known you the longest out of anybody out of the group, um, and um, we genuinely care about you and your well-being and your. Uh, mental health and your uh, self-image and things like that. And I know that you had talked about wanting to get them removed and it's a very expensive process and you're, you didn't want to burden your grandparents for something that you did and you didn't, you didn't have anybody to ask. So I have been working to make sure this has happened, could happen over the last few weeks. And so last night I got the okay and we're going to set up uh, some time. It'll it'll probably be on a weekend when you have it done, and then it'll be a few weeks where things kind of uh, they'll get real red and things. But um, I, you've been through a lot. You can handle this. <laughs> I'm I'm sure of it. Um, but I I want you to know, um, and I'm sure Jen would say the same thing. We are very very proud of you. We are um, extremely proud of you. You are um, what everyone should see when it comes to recovery. That you can do it. It's gonna suck. It's not always gonna be roses, but if you work hard and if you have faith in the one that can only give you the faith that you need and the strength, then you can you can do it. And I just want you to know that I'm very, very proud of you. And I, and I know Jen is too. So um, keep, keep working hard, keep being the best caseworker um, that you can be. Um, keep being that shining example of uh, what it means to be a part of the CCA family and, and to be in recovery. And you just be the best mom to those girls and the best husband to Matt. Um, wife. I'm sorry, wife, <laughs> wife to Matt. Sorry, don't be a husband. That would be weird. Um, best wife to Matt, um, who I know uh, anybody else that sees this, you know, you found true love and you found somebody that cares for your babies and you found somebody that um, understands mm -hmm. uh, the struggles that you've been through and, uh, and loves you no matter what, um, even though you are hard-headed sometimes, girl. And uh, he lives with that. Um, but we're proud of you and we love you and we want you to know that we were, we were doing this for you, okay? Thank you. You're going to make me cry. I, said, I, told, I told Matt today I was going to make old mean butt cry today. So uh, he said, well, it must be something big because if you're going to make her cry, it's got to be something big. So um, yeah. just... Um, this is a reward for for being the person that we always knew you could be. All right, I'm proud of you. All right, and I know other people are too. So just keep it up, and we love you. All right. Okay. Thank you. Love you all. Love you. Talk to you later. Bye. Bye. Bye.